Awesome. So we're here with Paul from Dinsync. Hello. Hey, Paul. Again. <laughs> so yeah, we're at this um, sort of outside cabin at Superbooth. Yeah, somewhere between the two Superbooth outposts. Yeah. Nice and shady. Exactly. What have we got on the table, Paul? Well, what we have here is finally the, the not the final case. This is uh, the RE 101. Uh, this is a project we showed uh, a little bit briefly last year, but this is the final product. Um, the case panel is just for the show, but this is probably the final design of the case, which will be coming later from Comptronics. But what we have on the inside is with our other gear is 100% compatible uh, with the original SH-101 board. So basically we're again selling spare parts, which are compatible and will enable you to uh, repair your vintage machine. Or if you have the expertise, you could actually build a brand new machine as I've done here. Um, this micro keyboard was actually just for the show because you know the SH-101 has this panel has moved and they have a full-size keyboard, but um, that's kind of expensive, you know, a boutique level to be tooling for a keyboard. So I came up with this kind of micro keyboard just for, the sh for this case and we've been getting very positive reactions about it. A lot of people have said, oh, it's a bit bigger than I thought it was because the first thing they're looking at is this. Mm. But actually the size of it is pretty much on par with the original SH-101. It's just that uh, we've moved some things around and there's some wasted space on the, on the edges of the original case. But the, yeah, the circuit boards fantastic. are 100% compatible with the original machine. And what we have different to all the other clones in the market, which are clones, this isn't a clone, this is a replica. We're using an original SEM VCO, which was used in the original uh, Roland machine. We're also working in conjunction with Analog Re Renaissance. Uh, if anyone knows who they are, they used to make the uh, replacement Juno chips for the 106. And so they are the premier experts on the 3109 circuit, uh, the VCF that's used in this machine. And uh, since we share a booth, we're really, you know, good friend, we're chatting about it. I say, can you make us a chip? And so he's made us a chip that is indistinguishable from the original, especially Brilliant. in the distortion of the resonance. Now, of course, we know there is other SH-101 clones in the market, and we know there is other machines that are using uh, other clone VCF chips, but I can tell you that they don't have all the character. They're losing a lot of, uh, we said the mojo in, in the distortion of the resonance. And we've got a thing on our booth, um, if you look on our Instagram, slash Dinsync, we've got a photo of uh, the original Roland VCF 3109, um, mm -hmm. The competitions 3109 and R3109, and you can see there's in 50% of the time there's glaring differences. Peaks are missing. It, it's not a smooth transition between on the on the sweep. It, it's it's a filter. The clone, the other people's clone, it's a filter, but it's not a replica. And this is what we do. This is this is what we do. This our unique selling point is we we want to make a machine that is as authentic as possible to the original and also becomes legacy spare parts for customers that haven't had any spare parts for 30 years or, or more. Yeah, because exactly. All the service centers actually in the past 10 years have been shut down. And now if you need service for an old vintage Japanese machine, you have to go to a, a major distributor shop and then wait for it to be sent to a third party. You can't actually talk, all the service centers, at least in Scandinavia, are gone. And I used to deal with them, which is sad for me because now I can't get any vintage parts. Yeah. So we have to we have to manufacture everything ourselves. But and as you say, that the filter on this is so integral to the SH101 sound. Yeah, that I mean, resonance it's, is so it's, it's kind important. of iconic, isn't it? I mean, you're not going to get those Apex burbles without the right filter, you know. And it, it, these, for us, 
for me, this the, the SH101 was the first real synthesizer I had as, as a young lad. And so this is kind of coming full circle because, you know, I love all this XOX gear. Um, but yeah, so this has been a real labor of love. We start, this actually, we started in 2020 um, and probably got put on the back burner because of, we did the 808 and the 909. But now we've caught up and uh, Great. this is what we have now. This will be available as a kit in our web shop in about a month. That's the Reed 303 web shop. You can Google that. Mm -hmm. uh, the cases will come a little bit later and they'll be coming from Comptronics. That's our partner in Austria who, work, who do the other cases for the other machines that we have. Um, and we also have exclusive for Superboob. I don't have one here with me, but uh, we have the uh, Reed 202, which is a prototype. Um, I can't say how far to completion it is, but we're like 90% of the way. There's, a, there's some things to, to work out with the, the rubber buttons and things like that. Excellent. Yeah. So, yeah. If, if our viewers check out the Taboo Tech video that we shot earlier today, oh, yeah, yeah. they'll see it in that Perfect. video. Perfect. Excellent. But yeah, and they're, they're, the, the machines, the 101 and the 202 are very similar, but at the same time, there's some fundamental differences where the 202 tends to be a bit more grimy and grungy. And I think it's to do with the voltage rails being different. But the, the circuits are identical, except for modulation. You have a delay on the 202, whereas you have different waveforms on the 101. Um, so they work differently, and so they and they actually sound different because the the 202 is all crammed into a small space, and it does make some effect, I think. Cool. So you know, it's valid to have both, really. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And I see you've got what's the bender? What's the bender? Oh, this thing is just a cover at the moment. Here. We're working on uh, the original bender uses. Um, I set the tap hot. And we have yeah. to have them manufactured, so we don't have any of them at the moment. So oh, okay. this, is, this, this won't come with the kit, the bender, because you can actually download a 3D model on our website and make your own. Oh, but nice. we, have to, we have to have this potential to made first. So that's a future thing, a future endeavor. But for the moment, you get the kit will have the, the basic, uh, it will have the, the circuit board, the control board, the synth board, the keyboard, the seek board, and, and the bender circuit, and of course the output jack. And then also with the kit, you get the uh, the, uh, the coil replacement from Michigan Synthworks. You get the SEM VCO will come with it, the oscillator, the 3340, and then the analog renaissance um, uh, RE3109 VCF chip. So it'll all come together. So you'll be able to build it. Uh, and then the case will eventually come from Comtronics. Cool. And how much is that going to sell for? It's kind of difficult to price at the moment because I'm still waiting for the CPUs and the, uh, the VCF to arrive and we're not making money on those issues, but they will add to the cost because you know you, you, they're fundamental to the build i would estimate somewhere between 300 and 400 euros for the base kit and the case if the other cases go by it could be 100 euros 150 i don't know great and the extra components you would need with the resistors and capacitors and some ic's very cheap not not a lot mm -hmm. actually they they will the most most of the expense goes into you know the manufacturing the potentiometers and stuff like that but right. the uh, generic Much. parts, they, some, some builders probably have a bunch of these resistors and there's not really anything, um, part, uh, apart from the VCO and the VCF, there's nothing too rare. There's not like a rare parts that you need to find, I think maybe a couple of transistors, but generally speaking, very easy to find, very easy to build and quite a relatively easy build, except for the wire looms is kind of intensive, so there's quite a bit of crimping involved, but this is, the original has these wire looms, so this, we want to have it as close to the original, so we have to use the original methods. Which yeah, it's an admirable, an admirable way of going about it. Well, but like you say, you're offering the, the parts for the people who have the original yes. kit, so it makes sense to have that, that dual functionality. Can we hear a little a little demo? Just okay, I'd, I'd, I'm, a I'm not a musician, well, I am, but I'd like to pretend I'm not. All right, so let's have a look at the sequencer quickly. You've got the original sequencer here. Um, the CPU has been made by Trevor Page, and. Uh, the, the DIY people will know him from the 1990 909 kit from 15, 20 years ago. He's the guy, he's done the CPU. Now, Amazing. this isn't uh, a replica CPU, but it's, he's done it down to copying the logic levels of all the circuits. So basically, it thinks it's a 101. Um, if we put in some notes, you can, you can just play them like you would a 101. If you put some more notes in, you can put a rest in, a tie, Turn the auto portamento on. Anyone who's got an SH101 is completely familiar with that. It's 
hundred percent. There's no additional extras there. There's not not uh, any fancy tricks because we want, you want the pure operating system. You've got the arpeggiator with the hold up, down, up and down, transpose, all those things snappy like they should be a, a, on the original. But additionally, this is obviously a demo case. We have built into the CPU uh, MIDI, so you will have. Um, you don't have to have a, if you want to use a, in your door or something, you don't need to have a CV gate uh, interface separate to that. You can just plug straight into MIDI. You don't have to, but obviously some people just want to use these connections and you have the, the in and the out. It's the same on the SH101. There's no difference between the functionality. Um, Everything is the same where it should be, like down to the millimeter, basically. Um, yeah, it's super authentic. And, it, and for us, really, the, the work, we're working with Analog Renaissance for the, filter that's the cherry on on the cake for us because that takes us the last you know the last percentages to making it as as close to the original as possible I, and trust me no one has a machine that sounds as authentic as this yeah. nobody does definitely great well thank you for showing us hey Paul. thank you really Thanks. appreciate thank you for it. coming <laughs>